Hello. Hello. And welcome, and welcome the lovely Rachel Spicer. Mm. So glad to have you here, my hen. No, I'll thank just, you for having me. You, um, most privileged. <laughs> um, a quick overview of who you are, in case there is actually anybody out there that doesn't know. Um, so, did it start off with TikTok? Started off with TikTok. Right, so, you are a TikTok influencer with 2.3 million followers. Yeah. Like, that is insane, isn't it? It's yeah, absolutely I, I was, insane. I know, I I'm know, like, oh, I know, and I can tell that you can do it, but, but it is who you are. Yeah. Um, and it is an amazing achievement. And then on Instagram, but even Instagram, Rachel, with 281,000 yeah. followers, it's insane. Yeah, it is no, really, it's, it's insane. Um, so, you became an influencer, but you didn't actually set out to become an influencer, did you? No, and I do it by fluke, I, um, <laughs> which I'm very grateful for. So I do know this because mm -hmm. I listened to five minutes of your podcast with Katie yeah. G, but um, tell us how you ended up, because I want you then like find that out, how you became yeah. this, you know, phenomenon on TikTok, then we'll go back the way a wee bit because I think yeah. that's dead interesting about yeah. you. No, so very random. I remember like the end of 2019, everyone was kind of getting obsessed with TikTok. And I remember like all my friends, like when we went to a party, would be like, oh my God, like let's film a, like, film a dance. And I was like, no, that's embarrassing. Wouldn't be me. <laughs> like, I'm not doing that. And then 2020, the beginning of 2020, my little cousin who's in the army, so I hadn't seen her in like six months or something so mm. she was home and she stayed over and she was also obsessed with tiktok and she was like oh come on let's just make a tiktok and do whatever so i set up an account we recorded two videos and i posted one of myself that night as well so i posted three videos in the one night and the one of my double chin went went viral overnight so i think it was like 1.8 million views mm -hmm. um was that and your that's second how it started. video? Was that or do you, uh, first the, night, very, first the night. very first night you went on TikTok? Yeah. That, I mean, for that to happen with one, it's pure luck. It's insane. Yeah, and it was it was literally my, my double chin. Like it wasn't wasn't Eyes. anything. It was just so weird because it's a double chin that went viral. Aye, like I started with my chin, but it's just everything about it. And I kind of haven't found out a wee bit more about you. We are. Um, drama theater, mm -hmm. theater uh, what's it called i um and you'd been in london whatever i kind of see when i realized that and that was actually just what i was about to say to you in the tim hort mm -hmm. rescue i fell into place i yeah. got it i was like oh ah. that totally <laughs> makes sense yeah. now because your background is in theater mm -hmm. so it's almost like a performance yeah like, you know that's what i was yeah. thinking anyway no so, yeah definitely see the overnight thing do you actually remember what the follower numbers were that first night I want to say maybe I think I hit 10k within the first couple of days of having right. TikTok mm -hmm. from that one video mm -hmm. and then it all just started just being like a double chin page mm -hmm. so I'm very thankful for my chins because uh, they, they bit, got me here body positivity as well yeah. which is a massive thing that yeah. all links into it I will ask more about that as yeah. well um, so was there a point, because I remember you saying to me the other week as well, you had no clue what you could actually make from influencing. No. And there was a point where before you had management, you were managing it yourself mm -hmm. and no really charging your worth, basically. Yeah. But was there a point where you realised, oh my God, I've actually got a platform here that can be my job? Yeah. I should do, was there a... I think it was the last, it was like the last week in 2022 is when I signed, or 2021, maybe, maybe 2021, um, I had a week worth of like meetings with different managements. Mm -hmm. So I, I never took my platform seriously until I hit a million followers on TikTok and I totally regret that because I didn't understand like what you could do with a platform or anything like that. Like I just seen it as a bit of fun. I didn't ever think it was going to be a full-time job or anything like that. And then at the end of 2021, um, I had a few different management teams reach out and say like we really would really love to sign you. So I took all the meetings one week. Um, I picked my management who I'm still with today, and and remember getting my first deal through. And all, all of them meetings actually they asked like oh like what are you currently charging for brands? And I'm pretty sure I said oh like between fifty and a hundred pound. And they were like a post. Yeah. <laughs> They were, like, yeah. they were like, oh my god, what? <laughs> and then my management when he got me my first brand deal, and I was just like, oh, 
<laughs> for one video uh, and I was like my god I wish I'd done this sooner mm -hmm. and the reason why I didn't take it seriously to begin with was one I just didn't understand and one I just let the background noise get to me type thing you know uh, when you people uh, are kind of making fun of you or like mm -hmm. the negativity around me then I was like oh well I'm not gonna actually go for it because mm -hmm. like oh it's cringy it's embarrassing and then actually when the management re reached out, I was like, you know what, like extra pocket money, you know, bit of bit of extra income, mm -hmm. that'll do good. And then it's just kind of took off from there. And you never actually even thought at that point this could be a full time job. No, but I kind of so I had a job during COVID, and I knew that once COVID is over, I'm gonna like my contract will be coming to an end. So it wasn't like I was in a secure job. I was like, really, I'm gonna lose my job in eight months because it was like a government funded COVID job. So I was like, I'm going to lose my job in eight months. I'm just going to kind of give TikTok as much as I can. And hopefully by that time, I'll have either made a bit of money that I don't need to rush getting a new job or I can take my time finding a new job or hopefully not need a new job. And mm -hmm. which I'm very lucky that it was the second one. Mm -hmm. And if it, if it wasn't for my mum and dad and still living at home, I probably wouldn't have been like took that plunge and done it full time because mm -hmm. it was my dad that was saying look you've actually you've, you've made a decent bit of money the past couple of months you still live at home you don't have a mortgage or kids or rent or anything like that he was like maybe you should just try it out for six months full time mm -hmm. see what you can do put all your energy into it and that was two almost two years ago now Mm -hmm. so and that's what you've done since yeah. then yeah which is so weird because i thought like my dad's like a, he's got his own business and he was like i he's, thought he was a business yeah man he's like his that. own business and it, i was so shocked when him and my mum said like no you should go for it like you still live at home like mm -hmm. you don't have to worry or stress type thing now like this is the time to do it because then if you did have mortgage and kids then it would be a bit more stressful when you've got a lot more outgoings whereas mm -hmm. like my outgoings were like less than 500 pound a month type thing mm -hmm. um so yeah, and I didn't think my mum and dad would say that. I thought they would say, no, you need to get another job as well. Like, why are you painting yourself green up in your room? Like, <laughs> come on, come on. But then it's all about, like, what you're making. You know, what mm -hmm. does it matter what you're doing yeah. for, for comedy or entertainment value? Mm -hmm. it's, it's about the bottom line at the end of the day. Money talks, as yeah. everybody says. Mm -hmm. um, so, or as the saying goes, I should say. Was that again another point? Because it's it's like I, I'm, the reason I keep asking this is I just find it so unbelievably successful, right? Mm -hmm. That you have two point three million. I don't know. I personally don't know any other creators at that level in Scotland. I mean, I'm sure there is, yeah. but I don't know any. I mean, Jamie Genevieve maybe, yeah. and I don't even know if she's at two point three million. Yeah. But like, was that another point where you maybe hit the two million? where you know you just woke up one day with the realization of the power that that's got yeah i think i think it was the jump from 1.5 to 2 million was very very close mm -hmm. that i was like so i gained like half a million followers within like a couple of months like it was it was mad right. um i just think i was very lucky in the timings because like all my following on tiktok like the reason why I hate everyone is like two point three million. That's amazing because I'm like actually followers don't really mean I know, much I know, because it's engagement and it's yeah, all that. So yeah. that's when I get like oh yeah. But I think for me it was literally just timings. It was I was getting like a lot of viral videos. So like them followers came from all my viral videos. Yeah, and what it means. So what I or how I perceive it on TikTok because I, I feel TikTok's extremely different to what, Instagram yeah. or any other social media yeah. platform um, and but I do still changing. love it I mm -hmm. do still love it it's not I'm saying oh it's different mm -hmm. I don't like it I love it but what I feel that means and this is you know it's a credit to you is that that is the number of people that have seen one of your videos and oh, liked you see, that it's like going, me out. I like her like just yeah. go follow I try um, not to look so, at like the numbers and stuff because like my most viewed video is like insane. ridiculous uh, amount, like yeah, million. million. I've never seen anything like it. And I was like, if I deep it of that, that's how many people have seen my face. I'm like, oh, that makes me feel like a goldfish. Like that's so weird. <laughs> so I just try not to look it's at the numbers. Yeah, I'm like, it? that's a lot of eyes. <laughs> That's a, that's a lot of, of eyes. <laughs> Some worldwide mm. famous people haven't had that many eyes on them. Oh, that's insane. what my dad's my dad says because I've always wanted to do like theatre performance. And he was like, that. "God, that's how many uh, you've 
more people have seen your face doing that than you would have on a stage type uh, thing and I was yeah. like that's mad yeah yeah and what do you think then attracted all those likes and follows was it do you think it was body positivity was it just the fun factor or I think it was just because it was so random Aye. like my so chin dances like to the to Aye. the beat I'd, I've always I've always done like my double chin like since I was younger it's always been a double chin I've always done the chin dance um so to me it was very normal and to all my friends it was very normal as well but I don't know I'd, I think it was just other people TikTok when it first started which I kind of miss especially during lockdown it was just everyone like having fun and posting Aye. funny Aye. funny Aye. random Aye. videos Aye. I was painting myself green like mm -hmm. we were just getting through the lockdown mm -hmm. and that's where I think TikTok has kind of changed as well because now it's not so much that yeah everything changes yeah I know. and sadly but I think that was just the time of TikTok was mm -hmm. funny random videos like half of them maybe are like eight seconds long like mm -hmm. just yeah just Generating from that, that mm -hmm. Aye. but there is a lot of deep and important meaning to a lot of the stuff that you do because yeah. as we've already said the double chins yeah that's what something you've always done and it's great fun and it's a laugh and whatever but actually it's a very important message for you yeah. it's about body positivity and there's yeah. nothing wrong with i remember i like started a hashtag that was like love your chin mm -hmm. um from a trend that we done uh, or that was going around and i kind of turned it into like my chin dance and then that blew up and that hashtag blew up for love your chin and it, my chin dances have always actually came from like a place of insecurity mm -hmm. so that's like the like funny twist on it is that everyone's like oh yeah like thinks it's funny and good but it does spread a good message but it's also coming from like an Aye. insecure side of me as well yeah because whenever i'm insecure i just all go into like weird weird modes <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Yeah. and you do that you yeah. do like see when you're talking you're doing delivery day and until i knew you'd been in london i was like rachel keeps going into this english accent like i need to know where that's no, from do you, know, do you know where it's from and it only clicked a few months ago my dad so he's my dad's english oh, and right, mom's scottish okay. but he's got a scottish accent right but because he is english if he talks to my nana or my uncle who still have their english accents he's english when mm. we're on holiday his english accent comes out like he goes in between his english and scottish accent and we don't bat an eyelid because we're used to it now but like he does it and I think it's growing right. up hearing him go in and, uh, and out as English and that I, totally it makes, makes sense. sense it was only like a few uh, months ago when he went uh, in and I was like oh dad's English again and I was like you're the reason why, <laughs> why I am the way I am it's you that was a question <laughs> like two weeks ago when we first talk, like talked I was like I, I, need, you, I need to know that I get that's it all the time a reason. Oh, do you, yeah do you I get all the comments right? being like all oh, the, the English accent threw, threw me off like I wasn't expecting uh, all the accent changes yeah. in one video and I'm like it's a part of just i mean i do it like in my day-to-day -day life talking to my friends and talking to my boyfriend Aye. anyway but it is, it's from my dad so the insecure thing i was going to ask you about mm -hmm. that as well and um, because i think a lot of people especially that put themselves out there like putting yourself out there and i understand through a hair loss point mm -hmm. of view it's like almost putting yourself out there and just seeing what's wrong with you and in yeah. commas, it's almost like a way of dealing with it and facing into it and just like if i put this out there then it, it's not so heavy on me yeah. it's out there and i'm just i feel it. like i do the exact same as i put it out there i make it into a positive so i'm like if you then hit my insecurities it's fine i'm already making fun I've of them it anyway. i'm like it's mm. not not gonna hurt mm. me you know mm. be more creative next time type thing <laughs> and the body positivity thing you are really passionate about that so you've said that's only been recently that i've been like more passionate about it oh, really? because of my like body insecurities that i've had for so long like i used to like hide my body cry myself to sleep for so long like especially coming from like a performing background in that industry you are constantly getting compared to everyone in the room mm -hmm. and that's just kind of clicked in my brain that then i'm also comparing myself to everyone in the room because of that mm -hmm. and like being six foot tall bigger like i was i was always the bigger in the room and through college and through going to london and for auditions like i've always been told that like every day like you're the biggest in the room like you need to lose weight like comparing me to 
skinny minis that are five foot five that are my best friends, but I'm, we're just not the same. Mm -hmm. um, so it's came from, I think the penny just dropped for me last year. Uh, and well, when I started my delivery days was because I was in between sizes. I hate shopping and out out and about because I can never find anything that fits. Mm -hmm. So then I just started my delivery days and they most of the time go horribly wrong because I don't know my size. I don't know what suits my body shape, which I think I'm getting better at. But that's what started the delivery day side of things because then everyone was yes kind of laughing with me because i was laughing at myself mm. as well when i've got my chub falling out of left know, right you and post center that. You post all of yeah that. and then Aye. that's helped me because i'm like oh i'm not the only person like other people doing that and then i'm getting messages and comments that if it's helped other people that's kept me going and it kind of mm. keeps me in check that i still need to like work on my like self-love mm -hmm. and body mm -hmm. positivity by doing the body positivity mm -hmm. online stuff. Do you think TikTok's made you love yourself more? Have you, or is it ch right from childhood? Because I read that, I'm sure you did an interview with the sun and I read that. No, I didn't. They just. They <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. There are not many people they, that say that to me when I say that. They right, write articles but... on me every week. They take a video once a week and make an online article oh, from okay. it. So I've never spoke to, I think, no, not from the sun. I have spoke to one newspaper a year and a half ago and that was it. Right, but, so yeah, did you, you do a video talk about your childhood then where you'd always been insecure, like you'd said you'd always been insecure from your childhood yeah. about how you looked? Yeah. So was there a point with TikTok, did TikTok actually help you accept yourself for I have to say by the way you're absolutely stunning that was another <laughs> thing when I met you you know I'm like no, oh my stop. god I think this lassie absolutely beats herself up and I immediately oh, just you. thought you were beautiful you're beautiful <laughs> you're beautiful it's not about you it's about you and so but you so it's interesting to hear that you really didn't have a lot of self-love for yourself yeah. but did TikTok help with that a bit of both mm -hmm. I feel like Yes, it did because it pushed me to go outside my comfort zone and learn to accept me because everyone else is that there's so many people in the same boat as me. Mm -hmm. But then it also the negative side of it would also give me new insecurities <laughs> or uh, like uh, things that I haven't thought about before. So I think I'm a bit of both. Right. But now, would you say now you're in a space of very much accepting? I know we yeah. always have challenges. Yeah, I know still need all, to work on uh, it, a but a hundred percent. Like me, five years ago, like yeah, it was very insecure mm -hmm. with my looks, my body, my weight, and that got in the way of like relationships, how I felt on a night out. Mm -hmm. Like there's been so many times where I've either. I had a mental breakdown before going out and then like redoing my makeup and going out and acting mm -hmm. as if I had the best night possible mm -hmm. but then I'm actually like really insecure and then cry when I get home type it's a thing. shame to do that though to yeah. actually paint the face and, mm -hmm. and go out and face it that in itself is a strength yeah so you touched on the actual like challenges that come with social media we're talking about trolling mm -hmm. so how did you manage that and was there a point where that did like overtake everything and you know really affected what oh, you Oh 100% doing. I remember my very first trolling wave and I think I was on maybe like 80 90k I was still very new to TikTok new to it and it was like another creator like stitched my video of my double chin and was calling me like fat phobic that I'm not even fat and I'm forcing it and I was like you only see what's above here mm -hmm. like you don't see anything else and this creator was a very big American creator can't remember her name now but she had like a, a massive following compared to me so then all her followers were like in my dms and in my comment section oh my like God, it was, Rachel, it was like bad hell. and i didn't leave my bed for about four days because i was literally just i couldn't go on my phone because i was crying <laughs> and then it was locked down so i was stuck in my house anyway and i was like i just didn't leave my bed for about four or five days and were people messaging you direct yeah. messaging you yeah and i was like and it was so weird because i remember like crying to my friends about it and be like they called me fat phobic and like they just laughed like they literally they don't know what you've been through because they know they know my body insecurities like from which kind of started after high school and they were like that makes no sense but it was it was that was ruthless and i always say like my trolling comes in waves mm -hmm. and so i'm i'm lucky that i don't get it every day or every week um 
so now I've just kind of learned, like, love the block button, but mm -hmm. with sometimes the block button, I can't work fast enough to get through them all. <laughs> well, like you're, at the size of your pace, yeah, I'm so like, I can oh. understand that. And it's, it's actually quite sad because I was on holiday last month and I posted a video and it was like on Instagram because my last big trolling wave was on Instagram mm -hmm. and it was about it was me and my boyfriend and I was in a bikini and he was hyping me up so that hate was horrible the first 24 hours of that video done it was all my followers that had seen it it was mm -hmm. all great and po po positive mm -hmm. and then the algorithm literally just done a complete 180 and it, it was on whatever men gym talk and i was getting so <laughs> gym talk oh, all oh, the gym just, lads aye, aye, being aye, like aye, you're aye. fat you need to hit the gym and aye. then they started then going in like for my boyfriend being like he needs to leave you like he doesn't love you like he needs to break up with you so you can have a glow up and it's like oh he's bringing his fat fetish out in public like it was all that and that that was hard that time and then so i was on holiday then. so that right. that was the end of that last year right, okay. but then when i was on holiday last month i was like wanting to do a like bikini video to be like it's fine to get your bikini mm -hmm. out on holiday like that. the world mm -hmm. doesn't end mm -hmm. when you wear a bikini and that i done that the last day of my holiday like half an hour before i went up to my room to then like pack mm -hmm. and it's because i tried to do it all week and i've kept on shitting out of it <laughs> <laughs> pardon my french <laughs> shitting out of it and then i posted that video and i turned my phone off and i didn't go on my phone for two days and because i was just so scared that i was like mm -hmm. that's going to be like that and i actually spoke the only reason i'm talking about it is because i actually spoke to scott about this what yesterday when i was going through i was like trying to reply to comments and stuff and i was like i'd never replied to any comments on that video because i was so scared that they were all like i didn't even read them like for two mm -hmm. days because i was so scared of it was all going to be hate mm -hmm. and i didn't go i don't go on my request dms because i was like it's all going to be hate mm -hmm. and then when i did and it was all lovely like i just cried because i was like oh that's really nice <laughs> mm, yeah. so um, i feel like that way it affects me as in i do just like block try and block myself out from mm -hmm. it but then i do feel bad so that i'm like missing all the positive the good stuff yeah I, so I, I just try and i'm like ugh, the people that spread negativity online just have no life i know it's a different yeah. breed i know mm -hmm. um so is that how you manage it then and it was interesting i was like enjoying what you were saying when mm -hmm. you were saying you know i just block myself out of it i mm -hmm. don't look i don't go anywhere and look for comments or whatever um, and it, like you know, I try to do that as well mm -hmm. because it is doing social media. You need to find a way of coping, to coping with that. Uh, it's not as easy as just putting yourself out there and going, "Oh, yeah. I'm fine. I'm great on social media." I feel it's like, not like everything's that. easier said than done. <coughs> Excuse me. I find it hard if I'm already like in a having a down day or a down week. Then sometimes I go and read the comments and I'm like, "Why the fuck have I done this to myself?" Like uh, make myself. So uh, I feel like when I'm in a good mood that's but i handle it a lot better i'm like mm -hmm. outside out of mind i'm not gonna look for it i'm not gonna reply to it or if it is really bad like me and my boyfriend will read them and laugh about them like mm -hmm. there was ones that he was like he must be blind to be with you and we were just laughing because like he's a minus 7.5 prescription naturally without his glasses he is blind <laughs> so <laughs> like good one so like we just like laugh about laugh uh, about them like he's great helping mm -hmm. me through that um have you had any <coughs> oh, excuse me any mm -hmm. type of therapy you know like counseling or you know no, but i want to i yeah i want the to the only reason i ask is i do think you're extremely mentally strong at mm -hmm. this level to do what you're doing and i did think i wonder if she's because oh, there's, that, there's that, deep insecurities in there that I, i'm like i do really need to unpack at some no, point but <laughs> you, you have managed mm -hmm. all of that yourself though mm -hmm. as well i mean that's incredible Okay. I'm amazed. Um, what about, like, obviously, your level? You've got a manager, <coughs> excuse me, you go to events, you rub shoulders with some big names and all mm -hmm. of that type of thing. What is that like? I, one of my like New Year's resolutions this year was to not go to many events mm -hmm. because, like, I, I don't have many like creator friends. Like I've got like one of my close friends, Dave, Dave, who I met through TikTok, I'm very grateful for, but he's like now a full-time flight attendant, so he's not at the events. And a lot of people I'm mutuals with, like I've met and it's just been like a high, or like I've pushed myself to like go by myself because I'm like, I want to meet friends. Like this job can be very isolating, very lonely. I'm like, I want to go meet people and 
maybe make some creator friends then when i go i just end up getting so anxious not enjoying it and standing myself mm -hmm. that i'm just like you know what like it's not worth me paying to go down to london and go down to manchester Do pay, pay for, for a hotel most times what? yeah yeah <clears throat> most most events is Unless it's more like work, like if it's a work event, then they'll pay for you to go down to do a video. But nine times out of ten, it's, it's all you I always pay. thought they paid for you for people to go no. to these things. No, 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 no. Like, it's just like a brand that will say, like, we're hosting this event, like, we'd love for you to come. And I would pay to go down to London, pay for a hotel, or pay to go down to Manchester, or pay for a hotel. And then I'm spending all this money, and I was like, I'm not enjoying myself. Mm -hmm. Or it would end up me being le leaving early because I'm not enjoying myself or I'm just feeling really, really anxious. So unless mm -hmm. I've now got better that I'm like, I don't go unless I know someone and like I've messaged, like we've, we've spoke before mm -hmm. or I've met them before that I'm like, are you going? Okay, I'll go. If you're going, we'll go together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Or if I get a plus one and if I can take mm -hmm. a friend or take Scott. It's funny you should say that because I used to always be the type of person that would be like, no, I'm fine to go to events. I'm totally fine. I can go anywhere I myself. I, I can to, sit yeah. I know, I know. And I was just going to say, but seeing the social media influencer world, like generally so speaking, different. it is completely different. And I personally yeah. struggle with some of the events and I'm, I don't go to loads either, mm -hmm. but um, I, I struggle with being in it. Like I'm older as well. Mm -hmm. I don't have stuff done. And you know, I just feel- I feel, I, we're, I feel like I'm a very different type of person. Mm -hmm. I'm a different type of influencer. Like, I feel like, as well, like, how do I say this? Like, I'm not meaning this, like, in a bad way or anything, but, like, going back to, like, my own insecurities, if I'm the tallest and biggest in the room and everyone else is, like, absolutely, especially, like, the beauty events and all the beauty influencers. Stunning and I'm, like, stunning. Uh, and I know, like, I've, uh, met, I've uh, met people and then my friends have been, like, does she actually, is her makeup that good in person? I'm, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 she's beautiful. Yeah. She's stunning. And it's not about them. I always think, like, these, if I go into an event and... I'd really try to avoid them now, but if I go into an event and the place is full, is stunning people yeah, like that. Yeah, I'm and just it's like not a them problem. It's a me problem. It's, no, it's a me but problem I feel as well. Extremely yeah. insecure <laughs> and no very. One well. of my last like beauty events and that's what one of my friend was like. Oh, like is our makeup that good in person? I was like, yeah, and I was like, I'm a really, I'm a big sweaty person and i was like yes because she was like absolutely stunning and because mm -hmm. i'd been i was there for a job and recording stuff i was sweating i was like my makeup <laughs> is dripping off me my under eyes are cracked and i was like standing tall to her and i was like you are beautiful <laughs> yeah, <laughs> i need so, to learn to do makeup <laughs> yeah you can do makeup mm. so um yeah you get that feeling as well and yeah. i think and again i do think that's another reason people relate to you because you're not that you know, kind of stereotypical, beautiful influencer. Mm -hmm. um, and we need more of that. We need yeah. more of these type of people. So see, going back, right, the acting thing or the... So where did all that start, the whole performing? So I think that since I was younger, I was always in dance class. In high school, our high school like had a dance academy, it was called. It was just like a, 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 every year had like a group of dancers. So I was in that. Um, and then after high school, I done musical theatre at Jazz Art in Motherwell. Oh, so aye. trained in dance aye. and musical theatre. And then I moved down to London to just focus on acting. You you just went yourself and moved down well, to London? Well, I knew one person. So it was my friend that was living down there and her flatmate was coming out, uh, leaving. And at that point in my life, I'd had a, I'd had a skiing accident and I'd hurt my knee. So I hadn't been able to walk for about like four months and I was bit depressed and my dad over here does on facetime and she was like you can come to london like my flatmates bringing up and i was like i'm on clark's like off sick because of my knee i'm like i don't have the money for london and my dad overheard me and he was like you need to go he's like you need to get out this rut you need to go and i remember going down to view the flat uh, with my mum still in crutches and then i was like okay next month i'll be able to come down because i'll have that sorted mm -hmm. and my dad was like i'll pay your first month's rent get a job i'll pay your second if you've not got a job by then mm -hmm. which was very 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 lucky to have very it's supportive very, have very been, supportive um, parents and he was like you need to go he's like mm -hmm. you, you, you're depressed <laughs> yeah he's nice. like go um and i got a job i think it took me about three weeks to get a job in london mm -hmm. um, what age were you 21 right 
and then moved in with my friend, so I only knew her, and then met th my other friends through my work, and I was there for two years, and the only, I only came back because of COVID. Mm -hmm. we were what very, was your work? What were you doing? So I was there? working in theatre, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then I worked in a theatre for like a year and a half, and then the other half year I worked in a primary school. Mm -hmm. Um, for a little change and we were very lucky that when COVID hit we were coming to the end of our tenancy agreement in the mm -hmm. house and we'd found a new house that we were just about to sign papers for. We'd paid a deposit but then COVID came and my dad came down, packed up all my stuff and drove up um, and then I was like I'm just going to be home for three months like yeah we all see, thought that. Yeah we were all like <laughs> elbow bumping like seeing a couple of months it's fine and then I'm like how long now? What, three or four years <laughs> right. later? Still here. Right. Um, yeah. So we lost our deposit, but we were just very lucky that we weren't actually stuck in like a, right. a contract right. and I would have had mm -hmm. to stay down there because <coughs> that would have been paid. hard. Right. Yeah. And so you weren't actually down there to get to be theatrical, to be on the stage. You were down just working. So I was working and then I was doing like my acting classes and literally just before like came. Um, before the COVID thing started was when I was in talks with agents and stuff. So you were going to go on yeah. stage down well, there? Well, hopefully I was wanting to start, like, I was doing additions and stuff, so... What did yeah. you want to do? Was it uh, West End? Was yeah, it well, theater? stage or film and TV. I was doing, like, acting for screen classes um, for quite a while, done that as well, and then just came back home, couldn't do much. Then that's, like, when I, like, gained more, like, gained weight because yeah. I wasn't going to the gym and being active or going to my classes and then that's kind of like through covid that's when i like lost my confidence I and mean, when it came to even the thought of like performing i do want to get back into it because i loved it but also like i know i definitely could not dance now like <laughs> like what i used to um but that's then what stopped me going like back down once everything started opening mm. up but i was like you know i've gained weight i've been i'm out of practice and at that point as well the new graduates were all out so i was like mm -hmm. everyone that's just fresh out of college like they've been in training for three years like they've still been doing training through that that i was just like nah i'm not coming back down would you now though would it be something that would be in mind mm. i mean you've got a massive successful career right now on tiktok but you can still do that anywhere you can still yeah i think in the future i do want to go back to acting mm -hmm. um but right now, I'm just like, I'm very grateful for what How I'm doing you, now. Mm -hmm. And I'm not naive in the fact that in five years' time, TikTok might be gone, Instagram might be gone, like, I could get locked out of my account tomorrow. So right now, I feel like I'm just focusing on that, mm -hmm. taking opportunities as they come. Mm -hmm. And we will, I will, I do want to get back into acting, hopefully in the future. Mm -hmm. um, I did have an agent, which they dropped me once I signed with my management but it was this whole ordeal, even though they knew that I was taking Is that an issue with, in the It was for world. them, but not from other people that I've met. They've got a social media manager and they've got an acting agent. Like, it's very different. But the agency I was with wasn't happy. And the agency I was with wanted to manage my social medias for me. They were like, oh, well, we can do that. And I was like, well, I told you I was taking meetings. So, like... I don't know why you didn't say this a month ago and I was like all right okay like I'll let's trial it for a month eh, for like three months I think we trialed it and they got me one brand deal and they asked me how much I charged and that's when I was at like, 150 pounds and they were like okay like yep yeah, we've got that for 150 pounds I was like you don't know what you're doing yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't know what you're doing <laughs> what's so, the point in being yeah. somebody that was getting the same as what you were getting yeah so yeah. I was like no you're just taking 20 percent of what aye. was coming through to me anyway. you'd have been aye mm -hmm. um so that kind of, see up to that point, that just makes it all fall into place mm -hmm. for me. Even the content that you create and the type of person that you are, it's just everything about you is about, you know, putting a show on. It was always like class like, clown when like, I was like growing up. <laughs> and just add, but adding a wee bit of, or a big bit of reality to mm -hmm. it, it's just created the X factor, as I say, <laughs> for you. You can't really put your finger on it, what mm -hmm. it is. You know, if somebody said, why have you done so well? on you know tiktok or instagram you probably couldn't put your finger on no. it and it is that thing it's of just personality and I that's think. why that's a thing mm -hmm. um so like your personal life so i know the lovely scott hi scott hi <laughs> scott this is a lovely <laughs> boy that's going to have had a big impact on you and yeah. like um you know influencing your decisions as to what you want to do and whatever but at the same time you did meet him when you were huge 
on TikTok. Yeah, I wasn't full time yet, but my Instagram hadn't grown yet. My TikTok was big. Aye. I wasn't full time yet when I when I first met him. So how did you meet him? Well, <laughs> he actually slid into my DMs. Oh, did he? And then I ignored him. <laughs> I didn't reply. Oh, I was all having. I was like, nope. I'm being celibate. I'm on a boy ban, mm. so I ignored him. And then we matched on Tinder like three months no later. Way. Yeah, oh, and wow. I did also almost ignore him again because we matched on Tinder, and he was drunk out with his friends and text like text me on Tinder at like four a.m. and it was like, oh my god, I recognise you from TikTok. And he signed it off with Fish Kiss. He hates me telling this story because he's <laughs> <laughs> it's so embarrassed. He signed it off with Fish Kiss, which is what I do in my video. And I was like and that was such a red flag for me when I was Aye. when I was dating. The reason uh -huh. why I was on a boy band was because the last date I went on before him, oh it was just like an interview. Like it, it was Oh, it, it was very bad and uncomfortable and it was because mm -hmm. he knew me from TikTok. Uh, it's funny, Kerry Roma talked about that. Yeah. Like, obviously, she's she's settled and all that now. But when I, when she was on the podcast, that was something she said, that when she was dating somebody, mm -hmm. um, it was always a red flag if, if they, they referred to yeah. TikTok. Yeah. You know, the, one of the first things they say to you, yeah. oh, I've seen you on TikTok. Yeah, I just like the whole date was like, an interview I think he was expecting me to turn up green like he was like he was just asking everything and then asking about money and I was just like oh my god oh this is just is just weird this is just weird so I did I almost like didn't reply to Scott and I actually don't know why I did reply to him I'm glad I did uh, cause he's I think I replied to him because I was out drunk as well <laughs> and does he live local? Was he living no, local? No, he's Edinburgh. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. I think you told me that actually. Yeah. And you're Falkirk, aren't you? Yeah. But it's not really that. He's Bonnie far. Rig and I'm Bonnie Bridge. <laughs> oh, I see. I know yeah. them both. Funnily From... enough, my yeah. best friend used to come for Bonnie Rig. I know exactly yeah. where he is. Um, so then that brings me on to my next question. These are all the nosy personal questions. Cause, but you do talk about this. Yeah, yeah. You're saving up for, for your own house. And yeah. So are you house hunting? So. We actually viewed a really nice house at the beginning of the year that we loved, but because self-employed, you need like two years worth of books yeah. to get a mortgage. Yeah. So I, the closing date was literally like the day after I could get my books in. So like we missed that house. But kind of blessing in disguise, my nana um, is now living with us. So Scott moved in with, to my family home like last year. So we mm -hmm. do live together. And then my nana moved in now a few months ago. So me and him both helped my mum and dad care for her. Mm -hmm. So it's not really the right time for us to buy a house this year because of Marana. She needs a lot of a lot of help. Mm -hmm. Scott's good because he only works three days a week because he works mm -hmm. in a hospital, so mm -hmm. long hours. So mm -hmm. he gets four days at and he's home as well. Experience, so that's ideal. Exactly, because that's his job. Yeah. Ideal for you so can. we're not going to buy this year, and then we've just kind of had the realization that my sister, my brother, well, my brother's partner, and my best friend have all had babies at the same time. Mm -hmm literally a few months apart and they're all telling me how stressed they are with like maternity pay and the mortgage and you know hearing it three, from three different <laughs> I was like you know we're not oh, in a rush for that actually uh, I was like so we're planning to do a little bit of travelling we were like let's go a big holiday before we're like have to get a mortgage we're very lucky mm -hmm. my mum and dad aren't kicking us out um, mm -hmm. we get on so well living with my mum and dad like we play cards so three perfect. nights a week It's we all get on great so we're going to hopefully do maybe a bit of Thailand at the end of this year mm -hmm. and then start looking next year for a, for a house right I yeah. didn't know you were um, with your mum and dad so see the yeah. rooms so you've got two rooms well I, from I've kind of taken over like, three now oh right okay because there's the bedroom where yeah. I usually see you do delivery day but there's this wee room that you're sometimes yeah. in so it's very all, you yeah that's like my content room right. so there was a time last year my brother still lived at home so me and my brother's rooms were opposites and there was a time last year my bedroom was just a mess constantly if things were getting sent to me or mm -hmm. recording and I was just always in my room like I felt like I was a hermit like mm -hmm. I got this weird kind of like I just felt like I always had to be in my room because I was always recording and then I would sleep and it just wasn't really right. a good good mm -hmm. cycle and my dad was building a shed out in the garden anyway so he was like well I can just that build an extra shed. room that is yeah. not a shed is it? that yeah. room with all the bits and bobs yeah. in it that's yours a wee oh, shed in the garden uh, that's um, he's a builder so he put it up himself so we were already getting a shed out and he was like well I'll just make a an extra bit for you um so we've got that the only thing is i don't record in it in the winter because it's not got heating mm -hmm. um so i'm actually i've just been like clearing it out to start recording in there again because my room's 
getting a bit messy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I like doing my delivery days in, in my room because it's just easy to then put everything straight in my wardrobe mm. rather than going outside because it's in, in the garden. So mm. um, I do like doing my delivery days there. And then when my brother moved out last year before Scott moved in, so now my brother's room is kind of Scott's room. <laughs> so we're taking over the house. Right. It's actually really your house. Yeah, um, he gets papped in because he does night shifts. So if he needs to sleep all day before a night shift, I'm like, will you go in that room? Because then I don't want to be locked out of my room that I record in and mm -hmm. such that. So yeah. Are you the youngest of three? Middle. Oh, the middle child. I'm middle child. Right. Have you got me? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, have you, have you got middle child syndrome? Are you not a typical middle child? I feel like I, I do growing up, but now right. I'm the favourite child. <laughs> right, so you're fine with well, that. to be honest, now my brother and my sister have a kid. Maybe I'm not so much. They've gave her my grandkids, so maybe I might mm. not be anymore. Mm. But aye, but yeah, that's fine. We're fine. Yeah. Aye, they, they, uh, we nieces and is it nieces and nephews you've got? Got two nephews and a little niece. Aye, because I've saw the pictures. I've yeah. saw some of the pictures on your stories and whatever. And they're so cute. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's that's plenty. Anyway, you can lap all that up yeah, before doing anything else. I love them. Else. They're so cute. Um, yeah, they are. So a typical day for you, you talked about delivery day there, there was loads of stuff I wanted to ask you about content, because you're obviously doing content, you're very big on body positivity, you're mm -hmm. very honest about when you order stuff, and it is so refreshing, like I'm watching it laughing when you're trying stuff on and you actually can not get it over, see mm -hmm. your boobs, or you, you put it on, it and up. it's just <laughs> awful. Are you, how do you manage that, Rachel, with like um, brands and whatever, because I'm always thinking, is that like is that brand paid yeah, for that? See, How do you do that? Like with the amount of delivery days I do, the brands that I work with aren't really usually fashion based. And I think it is right, because I am very right. honest that like uh -huh. if a brand does want to work with me on a delivery day, I'm like, well, unless everything fits. I'm not going to say it does. Or like, do you or, say that to them, right? If you want me to do a fashion for you, that's totally fine. But I yeah. am not going to pretend. I'm going to put this window down. I'm not going yeah, to pretend that things, um, stop a bit. things fit me when they don't. Do you say that to them? Yeah, that I'm like, I, as long as I think they know from my page anyway that that's going to happen. But yeah, I always just say that I'm like that's my delivery days it's going to have to be that right so you do so they know that anyway and that's mm -hmm. fine that's agreed before you go and do it and then the other thing i wanted to ask you was do you do a lot like you did tesco f and f because they've got 25 percent off this yeah week. do you that's not an ad i so do you no i buy do you everything try to do your own content with I, that everything type of i buy well? I'm, i don't get a lot of pr i'm not on like a pr list i don't get it's even like when I, when I used to do a bit of TikTok shop, like I bought everything. And that's when like I hate when everyone's like, this is an ad. I'm like, no, like I disclose everything. Mm -hmm. I, if it's an ad, I'll tell you. If it's gifted, I'll tell you. Yeah. But everything on my page, all the delivery days, my bank account fucking hates me, especially <laughs> when we're saving for a house. My bank account hates me. But yeah. it's just, it's, it's also because I spent so long just living in baggy clothes or mm -hmm. wearing clothes that don't really fit me that I'm like, I do need to find myself and Mm -hmm. get an outfit for something or whatnot but no everything i buy all my delivery buy. days i buy unless it's an ad um so and that's I part of everything your own creative content yeah i feel like um or something else i was just going to ask you a couple of things i want to ask you mm -hmm. the hours nearly up um how do you manage your day as a full-time content creator how do you manage what does a typical day look like See. doing your own stuff and then doing obviously paid stuff yeah so i this is what i struggle with and i've kind of got better the past couple of months because the thing is when you're your own boss the motivation like you don't have a certain time to get up you don't have a certain mm. like i need to do this 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 today but i'm trying to get better at writing a list and saying i do need to do this mm. because it sounds really bad, but I do sometimes forget that it's my job. Like sometimes I won't post for four days, and my sister texts me like, "Like, oh, are you like in a row? Are you all right?" Like, no, well, like, um, she always checks up, or my um, friends are like, "Oh, you're not posting. Like, is it the trolling? Are you all right?" And I'm like, "Oh, I, I started watching Grey's Anatomy from the start. Like, I've just been in a Grey's Anatomy hole, and I completely forget um, that I'm like, fuck, I actually have a job and I need to be recording. Like, it is bad. So I'm trying to like." get better what i've found the past couple of months is i've started the gym not for any sort of weight loss I've, I've got a pt not for we're not tracking calories we're not doing it for weight loss it's literally just 
to get me up, get my body moving, and then I'm home to have a shower, and then it, it just wakes me up. Because other than that, I could wake up at one o'clock in the afternoon. And so you're doing morning for that? Yeah. For the gym? So you're... mornings mm -hmm. usually go to the gym, come home. It's hard just now with my nana needing a lot of help. So I'm kind of up and down <laughs> helping her quite a lot. But I do try and record every day or every second day. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to post every day or two. Right. In terms of how much time you spend on social media, though, is a lot. that do you? Yeah, because well, I'm either scrolling, trying to then like think of inspiration or think of videos that I want to do or think of sounds that I want to use, and then even like when I'm lying in bed, like watching Peaky Blinders with Scott, I'm like replying to comments, I'm replying to DMs, like I'm constantly talking to people in my DMs, like which mm -hmm. I love, like that's mm -hmm. the the side of things that I love. So yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm on my phone a lot. Uh, right, I did yeah. wonder about that. Right, and something I wanted to finish on mental health. Yep. Basically, because you did touch on anxiety and you mm -hmm. have touched on your in insecurities, but I suppose what I want to do is just dig a wee bit deeper yep. into that and find out more about how anxiety, especially, has affected you throughout the whole journey. Not just, yeah. not just social I feel like media. my like mental health journey is constantly up and down. Mm -hmm. um, with social media, like sometimes I either put like too much pressure, pressure myself, and then I just have to like duck out for a bit. Like I just need like a week off to just get back into my. I, if I'm out of a routine, I am in a rut, mm -hmm. and that's why I vowed at the beginning of the year that I wasn't going to go to as many events because last year there was like there was three months. I think it was three months I hadn't spend a whole I hadn't spend a whole week at home. Because I was up to London, to Liverpool, to Manchester, back up to pack a bag to go down again. Like I was constantly up and down for events, and I, then when I would get home, I was like, I wasn't doing any of my own content because I was tired. And then coming back from events, I'm usually like stressed and anxious. Mm -hmm. Some events have just like made me feel ill. Like I come home because mm -hmm. I feel like with my anxiety, it's more like my body pumps pumps itself full of adrenaline to get me through like if I'm nervous because I'm going to an event by myself my adrenaline pumps me to get through the event mm -hmm. and then like when I get home I'm physically sick for two days mm -hmm. and it's and I, I never I didn't really think it was anxiety until my boyfriend kind of explained it to me no it's like it's your adrenaline and that is you're basically on like an adrenaline come down type thing mm -hmm. that he was like no that is anxiety like from there because I feel like I've, all, I've, I've been anxious in the past and stuff but it wasn't until him and one of my friends also said it was the adrenaline and whatnot that I was like well that makes sense and that's mm -hmm. why I was like you know what I'm not gonna put myself through that so that's I'm just taking more time for me kind of like mm -hmm. taking a step back still love to do my job we'll go to an event like if, if I really want to go to an event mm -hmm. but I'm not stressing about it too much I'm very I feel like I'm taking care of myself a lot more this year mm -hmm. which, is um, good. which is good and what uh, one of my questions I was going to actually ask you how Scott it copes with that whole social media thing as your partner he comes across as very understanding yeah. and even what you're saying there and I suppose that's a big factor in the success of your relationship a hundred percent yeah no he's he's really good with me he's very supportive if i'm like even if i'm like out of ideas you'll be like oh well let's like let's talk about it like what about this mm -hmm. what about that he's up for being in the videos like he's never like getting in the videos but he's uh, like oh like especially when we man. like vlog mm -hmm. or like scott and rachel's day of fun like he'll still like take part and record me and whatnot as well so like no he is very supportive uh, so it good. doesn't bother him because obviously i've witnessed it as well being at an event with you um that loads of people do recognize you and him, he gets recognised as well. Actually, he gets recognised. Mm -hmm. There's been many times we've been out and someone's seen him first and then like followed him back to our table. <laughs> <laughs> he um, he doesn't mind unless everyone's respectful. Um. There's been quite a few instances where he's like, right, okay, come on. <laughs> like, I say, has that happened? There's, yeah, there's been quite actually quite a few recently that people have been commenting on our relationship to our faces, <gasps> which has been very like oh my God. that he's. It's not sat right with both of us, and it's usually when people are really drunk. But it's like people like I've been, been like, how are you two to get like used to are so opposite? Like he's so quiet. Oh, like I don't think and so. I'm like, he's quiet because you don't know him. Mm -hmm. Like you're a stranger. I wish he was quiet sometimes because mm -hmm. he's not. <laughs> um, so when it's like that, or there's been instances where it is usually when people are drunk, maybe a bit too much kind of pulling me 
here and there. Yeah. If there's a few people, um, that's when he's like, right, guys, like we need to go, like which is good. Yeah. Um, so he'll draw the line on yeah. it for you as well. So he's a massive support for you. Have yeah. you actually been out and had to come away because of that type of behaviour? Uh, I wouldn't let it like stop me go on with my night but it's definitely i'm like right okay i'm gonna move over to a different bit or like i'm from saying all right we're gonna go to the bar and get a drink and then people will come with us and i'm like okay oh, <laughs> but no. like i honestly i i love meeting people mm -hmm. i mean everyone's so yeah, nice i love it i'm like love it that. absolutely mm -hmm. love it to meet everyone and i much prefer people to come up and say hi because there's been times where i'm like <laughs> we've been like at, at Costco and someone's like with their phone like trying to take a oh photo no, off Ben oh or no. like follow Ben and show up and like oh can't no. just come up and say hi right. like I'm, get a I'm, photo. yeah I'm like I'm very much from what people have said they're like I'm glad you're the same as what you come across on hi. social media and that's I'm like I don't want to be anything other than myself so I'm like come up come up and say hi um because then when I hear people whisper that's when I that's when I get anxious that's when, the yeah. that's when I get anxious that's mm -hmm. when I feel like a goldfish I'm like oh someone's like staring at me oh right okay whereas i'm like just come up and say hi and that it relaxes me i want to meet you as well because at the end of the day like i will say like i always call everyone chicken that i'm like the the people that mm -hmm. follow me have genuinely changed my life i wouldn't be doing this job okay. if if it wasn't for them mm -hmm. so like i'm all for coming up and saying hi if you want a picture up to a picture mm -hmm. like hey, there's just like that, that line yeah there's just yeah, there's just I, and, and mm -hmm. it's 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 always it is usually always positive. There's just like mm -hmm. been a couple, quite a few instances that I'm like, oh, no. And see, be honest, being the size that you are on TikTok and Instagram, mm -hmm. um, that that's you're doing. That's all right. You're doing pretty well. Yeah. To only have had a few, yeah. although none of it's okay. You know, so I'm just trying to, you know, get the balance right there with yeah. what I'm saying. It shouldn't be happening at all. But I'm glad that it's not more than that. That's yeah. what I'm trying to no, say. It's... Um, and do you ever like your day to day life? Do you? have to avoid going anywhere or do no. you just go about your normal yeah, life yeah just go about my normal life i don't that's think normal. i'm I d that's the thing as well like I, I don't i don't think of myself as anyone that you should know like right. and there's been yeah. a lot of times right. when someone yeah. comes up and their friends like like who are you like or anything mm -hmm. like that and i'm like oh like my name's rachel like i just do about social media like you you don't need yeah. to know me that's when some people can also be rude being like well why is everyone taking your phone like uh, what, yeah, why is that well, what is um, all this that i'm like if you don't know me that is absolutely fine mm -hmm. you but don't, don't need to know yeah. me yeah you do not need to know me i'm i don't expect anyone to know who i am i don't expect any special treatment or anything i just do me yeah and, and if the I other meet, thing is meet you along the way then that's great uh, yeah the other thing is we TikTok is a worldwide platform so that 2.3 million albeit it is absolutely huge but if that's spread out across the whole world oh, yeah. then you know you're it's not like being Lewis Capaldi yeah and you exactly. know everybody I'm, I'm oh like, you're following like yeah. I know he's worldwide as well but you know everybody in Scotland knows yeah. him it's not like it's that not like that at all thing. no and um, do you know I was I know I've kept saying anxiety it was the last thing I was going to talk to you about but just one thing that popped into my mind there was you said about Instagram not growing the same at the same time or as quickly yeah. as TikTok was there something that you did specifically on instagram that allowed your so, platform to grow there while i was like doing tiktok i didn't post on instagram because i because i'd moved back to my hometown i was like oh god what are people that i went to high school gonna find like some of my closest friends at the time were making fun of the fact that i was making content mm -hmm. so i was very much like oh no like that's embarrassing i liked that tiktok was so big that I was like, chances are, uh, in my brain, no one I knew watched my videos. Like, in my brain, no one watched my videos. Because <laughs> I was TikTok like, TikTok shows you all the Scottish yeah. people because you're Scottish. I, so I was that like, well. oh, I'm probably not on there for you, Paige. Like, I, I mm. didn't think of it. And that's probably why I posted crazy on TikTok, like, painting myself green and stuff. Um, and then just Instagram, it was kind of, I think it was last year I started Instagram with 50k. Really? That's grown that was much the start in one of last year? year, yeah. Or was it the year before? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah you started yeah. that late and then it grew quicker. Rachel, I never asked you no, about so the green green. And people will want to know that. So I need to ask you that as well. <laughs> I do know the story, but people won't know the story because again, the green paint was just something that yeah, happened by part accident. Of me. So I was the double chin videos on TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, I was getting compared to the green glibbler at Hotel yeah. Transferia, which I think people were trying to do it to like hurt me, and then I just 
changed it to be embraced like it. embraced it. I ended up finding green paint in my bedroom anyway, so I had it from so years ago. That from it years ago, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna uh, paint myself green. Thought it was only gonna be a one-time thing, and then I remember telling a story on my live because I've I've had this inside joke with one of my friends and my sister for years that my alter ego is called Denise. Mm -hmm. And it's because we went on holiday to, um, where were we, Budapest. Mm -hmm. And my sister took me and my friend on holiday. She surprised me and done the whole thing because I was in a little bit of a rut. Wasn't feeling wah wah wee woo, I would say. Um, <laughs> and she was like, right, we're, we're going to Budapest. Your friend's coming as well. Um, and I got very drunk one night and I was talking to this guy. And his English was very good. And he just kept on calling Denise, me Denise. <laughs> And I was like, I kept on having to say, no, I'm Rachel, no, I'm Rachel. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to correct you again. I'm going to be Denise. And I had the best night out. I was doing karaoke. I was swinging my knee-high boots around. Like, I was not, I was wearing a crop top for the first time in ages. I did not give a fuck. Um, and because of the way I was feeling before, on that trip, we were like, no, we're going to keep this Denise energy. Like, Denise uh -huh. came out there. Like, mm -hmm. we need, to, mm -hmm. she's the confident alter ego. So it used to be an inside joke with my sister and friend. Like, anything embarrassing that I'd done, any drunken night out, it was like, oh, Denise, is Denise coming out tonight? And I'm like, <laughs> wasn't me, it was Denise. Like, oh, don't know. And then I told that story, and someone was like, oh, is that your green character? And I was like, yeah, I guess so, because I, I, I don't paint myself green, it's Denise. So uh, yeah. we named her Denise. She is, Denise, I feel like my green character style for confidence like being true to yourself yeah. just letting yourself be you like that's what she symbolizes and see that just underlines what i was saying about the comedy value is there but actually there's some really deeper. important deep stuff within that yeah. and that would be a good point to end but i did have some, one more question <laughs> hit me with it <laughs> we're at 56 minutes right oh, we still got, got a few minutes time. i'm not in a I rush wanted to, so i just wanted to say with denise and the green though um it's you know it's got all those important messages and whatever but i love that it was the trolling that powered that. Yeah. That powered that. It went viral. So you yeah. turned a negative thing there into something incredible. Yeah. And I love that. Right, so the final thing I want you to ask, and I promise this is the final <laughs> thing. Throughout it all, did you lose any friends? Yeah. Because you became... I would say, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And was it? Right, <laughs> no, so no. I was going to be like, I... yeah, I've stepped away from a lot of friendships and it was all just from... Well, not even a lot of friendships, just from a few friendships that I'm like, well, if you're making fun of me and I'm, I'm not hurting anyone, I'm having fun, I'm enjoying doing it and I'm making a little bit of extra money at that time, um, that I just started to remove myself mm -hmm. from certain situations. And then also just growing up as well, when I realised if you're not putting in the effort with me, I'm not putting in the effort with you. So I feel like definitely, like, I used to have such a big circle of friends, like mm -hmm. multiple groups. And then I realised that I was like, actually you're not my th we're not we're not the same type of people anymore or or you're not making an effort with me so I'm not really going to make an effort mm -hmm. with you anymore mm -hmm. type thing so and now I've got a small circle of friends and I absolutely love they're like my ride or dies mm -hmm. best friends can trust them they hype me up I hype them up like very supportive circle I've got now so mm -hmm. I wouldn't change that and that's all you need yeah. really right I, I'm not going to ask anymore I think okay. that's been right absolutely done. amazing finding all that out about you thank you so much for thank agreeing you for having me thoroughly enjoyed I've it I've enjoyed it's been great fun we'll see you next time bye, bye.